better equipped and more efficient, Renault's improved third generation Megane family hatchback is now a smarter proposition in more ways than one. If you're shopping for something Focus or Astra shaped in this segment, it'll probably no longer be one of the first cars you immediately think of, but it still offers a very complete all-round package that's difficult to ignore. Ordinary family cars can no longer be ordinary. People want polish these days, a smarter feel and high-tech features that make them feel pampered and premium, which means that in the focus-sized family hatchback segment, they may well find themselves looking at cars like this one, Renault's much improved third generation Megane. With the French maker's position as one of Europe's biggest car makers severely under threat and a slim down range of conventional models forced upon dealers by this brand's commitment to electric power, it's hard to overstate the importance of this car if you happen to run a showroom with the yellow backed silver diamond above the door especially as it failed to make much of an impact on the market in the original Mark III guys we first saw in early 2009. But then with underpinnings based on a second generation model dating all the way back to 2002 and smart but unremarkable styling, there wasn't really much back then to set this car apart. In more recent times, Renault has tried harder, adding fresh engine choices and a range of styling tweaks in 2012 then further expanding the power plant choice and more thoroughly updating the looks in early 2014 to create the version we're going to look at here. With all this, along with improved specifications and existing virtues like the spacious cabin and the comfortable ride, be enough to rejuvenate this French family hatchback's appeal amongst focus folk. Let's find out. There's nothing especially sophisticated about this car under the skin, so it probably won't come as too much of a surprise if I tell you that there's nothing especially remarkable about the driving experience it offers. It lacks the clever multi-link rear suspension setup that you get on a Focus, but then so do rivals like Vauxhall's Astra and Peugeot's 308. Lower order Volkswagen Golfs and Seat Leons are no cleverer when it comes to damping either. What's important here is that Renault's engineers have made the most of what they have. And as anyone who's driven a Megane Renault Sport model will tell you, it's amazing what they can draw from what on paper seems like an unpromising set of mechanical ingredients. Detailed tweaks made to this Megane in recent times have included a revised front suspension subframe arrangement to improve directional precision and a rear suspension setup tuned to produce a more responsive, agile ride, as well as offer improved cornering. Sportier trim variants like the GT Line version that I'm driving here claim to take that a little further by using the same slightly stiffer setup used in the three-door Megane Coupe but none of it gives this car the Renault Sport feeling, nor should it. Buyers in this sector don't want to drive on their door handles. Talk to the engineers and you discover that many of the more recent dynamic improvements were qualified by the need to preserve the ride comfort, refinement and ease of use that existing Megane owners so appreciate. Perhaps that's why the supposedly more responsive electric power steering system still lacks feel. At least that makes this Renault easy to use around town. As before, the main focus seems to have been on making this a very easy car to drive. Everything, steering, pedals, gear change, it's all very light. Something you'll either like or you won't. The same comment also applies to the rather incongruous looking but very clear instrument arrangement uh, with its digital speedometer and analog rev counter. That's what you get in the baseline models. Uh, here in this GT Line version, there's a more conventional set of analog dials. If you plan to take on the likes of the Ford Focus, the Vauxhall Astra, the Volkswagen Golf and the Peugeot 308, you need to come equipped with a lot of engine selections. And this Megane is now even better provided for in that department. The petrol unit of choice, the 1.2 litre TCE, is now available in two guises, 
the existing 115 brake horsepower manual model now joined by a Pokia 130 brake horsepower variant that only comes with the brand's twin clutch EDC automatic gearbox. The 1.2 TCE was the first Renault petrol power plant to use direct fuel injection and turbocharging to gain fuel efficient performance. It's yet another example of engine downsizing in this segment, following the success of Ford's one-litre Focus EcoBoost models. As in that case, the objective here is to provide the performance of a two-litre petrol unit allied with the fuel economy of a diesel. But because Renault is stuck with a four-cylinder layout rather than switching to uh, three cylinders, you don't get the buzzy thrum under power that you'd find in the Ford. Mind you, you don't get quite the same fuel and CO2 returns either, but this particular variant can still manage a vast improvement over the aging 1.6 litre 16 valve petrol engine that continues to prop up the Megane petrol range and offer a driving experience that's much nicer. Thanks to a 40 newton metre torque hike over the 1.6, the pulling power is greater and more accessible with 90% of the 190 newton metres on offer in the 115 brake horsepower model available from just 1600 RPM. So you don't have to row the thing along with the gear lever. 62 miles an hour is 10.9 seconds away from rest en route to 118 miles an hour. Go for the automatic 1.2 TCE 130 EDC variant and those figures improve to 9.7 seconds and 124 miles an hour. Ultimately though, for diesel-like pulling power, you really need a diesel. And the vast majority of Megane customers opt for it in 1.5 litre form. The 1.5 litre DCI 110 unit is Renault's best-selling global engine and Megane customers who select it can choose between two versions. First up, there's a manual model with stop and start or an automatic EDC twin clutch variant. Either way, a 20% increase in pulling power means that there's at least 260 newton meters of torque now on offer, enough to get you to 62 miles an hour in around 12 seconds on the way to 118 miles an hour. Should that not be sufficient in your five-door Megan hatch or Sport Tour estate, then one other key diesel choice remains, the impressive 1.6 litre DCI 130 unit. That's the one that I'm trying here. One of the best diesels currently on sale, this one's a good choice if you plan to use this Renault for towing with a useful 320 newton metres of torque, meaning a sub 10 second rest to 62 mile an hour time is possible on the way to 124 miles an hour. The styling of the original version of this Mark III Megane wasn't especially memorable, but it was essentially quite smart with a strong dynamic stance thanks to particularly short front and rear overhangs. So not too much of a nip and tuck was needed to bring it up to date. I've always quite liked the front end with its racy crease lines sweeping down from the A-pillars along this sculpted bonnet and the neat way that the wipers are concealed beneath the bonnet line. Well, it now has a more contemporary look with a prominent bold Renault logo set against a gloss background and flanked by restyled streamlined elliptical headlamps and LED daytime running lights that stretch along the outer edges of the revised bumper. They extend the fluid contours of the air intakes and add to the purposeful look. Move along the side past the restyled alloy wheels and you might struggle to see the Latin influence Renault reckons is at work here, but there's a strong coupe-like look and a feature line that at the rear is picked out by the two-piece light clusters. You're more likely though to remember the cabin of this car, if only because of the rather odd digital speedometer, analog rev counter instrument arrangement most models offer, though not the upmarket sporty variant I have here, which gets a more conventional set of dials. I'm not sure why Renault feels the need to offer both, but I've no issue with the quality of fixtures and fittings that seem to be decently screwed together by the Spanish Palencia factory. 
the soft touch finish on the dashboard cowling, for example, that's resistant to daily use and the aging effects of sunlight. And the well-chosen selection of trim and materials that's especially nice on a plusher variant like this one. The important thing to note though is that you don't have to pay for an expensive version for your Megane to feel smartly turned out. And that's a major advantage this Renault has over competitors from Volkswagen and Ford. It's certainly very comfortable here at the wheel thanks to reach and rake adjustment for the steering wheel and a wider range of seat height adjustment than any other car in this class can offer. Rear three quarter visibility could be better though. Refreshingly, you get a conventional handbrake. Now, because this car was designed primarily for left-hand drive markets, the fuse box takes up half the glove box space, but otherwise, there's plenty of practicality around the cabin. With a cup holder in front of the gear stick, uh, underfloor stowage compartments, and door bins designed to carry a one liter bottle. Dominating the upper middle part of the dash is the display screen for the Carmanat TomTom sat-nav system that most owners will want. With this revised model, there's also the option of building into it the brand's clever R-Link infotainment system uh, that uh, carries with it an upgraded 7-inch display offering more sophisticated route guidance, as well as uh, all kinds of extra features. You get an eco driving menu and various downloadable apps. I love the way that this screen is so versatile, showing anything from uploadable family pictures to weather reports. And there are features like uh, voice recognition, email access, and text to speech functionality. Thanks to a long 2.64 metre wheelbase, interior space has always been a selling point of this design, something you especially appreciate from a seat here in the rear. Now I'm told that three fully sized adults would be perfectly comfortable here, though I doubt that if the journey were to be very long. Still, no car in this class can properly accommodate three burly people at the back. Should that be required, they'll be better off in this Megane though than they would in many other models in this segment. And three kids will be quite happy. There are no underfloor compartments like you get in a Scenic, but uh, seat back uh, pockets and this deep but narrow storage bin should be sufficient for most. Luggage is well served too, though it has quite a high lip. The 372 litre boot is one of the largest and best shaped in the class, offering 56 litres more than you get in a Focus and 21 litres more than you get in an Astra. Now, you also get a useful uh, compartment under the carpet, and if you don't opt for the preferable extra cost spare wheel that I've got here, there's 33 litres of underfloor storage as well. Now, even in this guise though, the cargo area is certainly able to swallow a couple of family suitcases and two overnight bags with ease, though folding the rear seats down to increase cargo capacity could be a simpler process. The reason for that though is that the seat folding process is a bit better thought out than with most cars in this segment. Normally all that happens on a car like this is that you flop the rear seat back onto the base but as you can see, that doesn't leave you with a flat cargo bay. Here, you can pull up the seat base and push the back rest forward in front of it so that, as you can see, the seat back can lie virtually level. Now, it makes a big difference, especially when you're trying to get in something big, square and heavy like a fridge or a chest of drawers. It also means that uh, though the cargo capacity revealed is one of the smaller totals in this class, 1,129 litres, you'd still be able to see this car as one of the more practical choices in its sector. If that's not enough, the Sports Tourer Estate version offers 524 litres of space beneath the rear parcel shelf and the option of folding the back seats down to free up 1,600 litres. List pricing suggests that you can expect to pay somewhere in the 17 to 22,000 pound bracket for mainstream versions of this Megane. 
Here we're focusing on the five door hatch model, but there's also the option of finding a thousand pound model for model premium to get yourself the Sport Tourer estate version. There's also a coupe body style where the premium over this hatch can be anything between 500 pounds and around 1700 pounds, depending on the variant you're looking at. The other Megan body shape is the pretty coupe cabriolet, but that requires a model for model premium of just over 5,000 pounds over this car. For hatch and sport tourer buyers, the model lineup is pretty straightforward. There are two petrol engines and two diesels, and I have a strong recommendation to make in each case. For petrol folk, it's well worth finding the extra £800 necessary to progress from the ageing and efficient 1.6 litre unit to the more modern turbo 1.2 TCE 115 variant that's about 30% more efficient. But once you've done that, it's pretty hard to ignore the fact that the brand's excellent 1.5 litre DCI 110 diesel engine costs just £700 more. Understandably, most potential Megane buyers can't see beyond this supremely efficient DCI power plant, and the majority of them can't see the point in finding another £1,500 for the Pokia 1.6 litre DCI 130 unit, unless they need the extra pulling power for something like towing. List pricing is often only a starting point for negotiation in the tightly fought, focus sized family hatchback segment but I do need to put Renault's figures here into some kind of perspective. It certainly isn't the cheapest choice in its sector. Certain derivatives of Korean contenders like Kia Seed or High End i30 could save you a thousand pounds or so, for example. But it also looks very affordable next to direct rivals like Honda Civic or Volkswagen's Golf, especially if you're looking at a diesel model where the Megane saving could be over two thousand pounds. I think it more likely though that most customers will be comparison shopping this car against higher volume options in this sector like Ford's Focus or Vauxhall's Astra. List pricing suggests that both will save you a few hundred pounds over this Renault, though in truth much of that difference would be equalised if you specified all of these to the same level as an equivalent Megane. For me though, a tougher value test for this car would be to match it against a couple of more recently launched contenders in this segment, Seat's Leon and Peugeot's 308. After all, in their 1.2 litre petrol guises, both can get the better of a comparable 1.2 litre petrol Megane in terms of both asking price and running costs, if not in spec. But turn to the volume diesel variants and the picture is a little different. As I've said, most buyers in this sector want decent performance from black pump fuel, so would be looking to buy their Leon as a 1.6 litre TDI, or their 308 in 1.6 EHDI 115 guys. Here again, both of these cars are usefully cheaper than a comparable base diesel version of this Renault, but crucially, their running costs are worse. To change that, you've to spend more on the kind of fancier technology this Megane doesn't need either £800 more on a 308 1.6 Blue HDI 120 or around £1,500 more on a Leon Ecomotive 110. The devil's in the detail, you see. So, let's say you've carefully considered all of this, uh, been offered a very good deal and decided on a Megane as your choice in this segment. What can you expect to find fitted as standard? A very reasonable level of kit, as it happens. Whichever version of this car you choose, you can expect to find features like alloy wheels of at least 16 inches in size, LED daytime running lights, front fog lamps, a Thatcham Category 1 alarm, power windows and mirrors, uh, air conditioning with a pollen filter, a trip computer, a height adjustable driver's seat, uh, Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, uh, cruise control with a speed limiter and a decent quality stereo system with USB compatibility and controls accessible from the leather covered steering wheel. A pity though that like many cars these days, this one makes you pay extra for a spare wheel. I can't be bothered with all these fiddly tyre inflation kits. Most Megane buyers though opt to find another thousand pounds on top of the cost of base trim to get themselves up to the Dynamic TomTom -tom trim level your dealer will probably first direct you to. 
as the name suggests, that means that you get a TomTom navigation system as standard. And this one's very effective, featuring Europe-wide traffic information, speed camera location warnings, and a Google local search function that allows you to search for places of interest and can give you weather forecasts. At this level, you also get features like dual zone climate control and also headlamps and wipers. If you want more and a touch of extra purpose for your McGann, then adding a further £1,500 to your budget will bring a GT Lion TomTom variant like this one within your reach, with its sport chassis, lower suspension and larger 17-inch wheels. Interior niceties here include a Renault Sport steering wheel, aluminium pedals, extra tinted rear windows, rear parking sensors and a thumping Archimedes 3D sound system. As for options, well, I definitely want to look at the R-Link multimedia system that's been fitted here with its seven inch color screen, upgraded sat nav, eco driving menu, and various downloadable apps. Bear in mind though, that after the first three months of use, you'll have to pay a subscription for it. Other nice touches include striking ID paint, a panoramic glass sunroof, and the plush leather pack plus option that gives you heated seats trimmed in two-tone carbon and silver gray upholstery. Lovely. Safety wise, this car was the first in its class to be afforded a five-star Euro NCAP safety rating way back in 2002. Renault has been the only maker to have achieved this five-star rating 11 times, and safety is still a key selling point. There's ESC stability control and ABS with brake assist and brake force distribution. For this car, Renault has also developed hill start assist, ASR anti-skid regulation and CSV understeer control to help corner turn in. It's all there to help you avoid an accident, but if you just can't, there are all the usual airbags, including twin front, side and curtain ones, plus Isofix child seat fastenings and, provided you avoid base trim variants, anti-whiplash head restraints. The front end of the car has also been especially designed to protect pedestrians in the event of a collision. If you want to go further, a tempting option is what Renault calls its Visio system, which includes a lane departure warning setup that'll stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway, and headlamps that'll automatically dip themselves in the face of oncoming traffic at night. Lighter weight and optimised aerodynamics have meant that Renault has been able to match the current high family hatch class standard for optimised running costs. I'd try one of the 1.5 litre DCI diesels first, um, which can put out as little as 90 grams per kilometre of CO2 and record up to 80.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Now that's thanks to a stop-start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Go for a version with the EDC twin-clutch auto gearbox though, and those figures fall substantially to 67.3 miles to the gallon and 110 grams per kilometre. Even the Pokia 1.6 litre diesel, the DCI 130 I'm trying here, that's the most powerful and frugal engine of its size in the world when it was launched. Uh, that manages 70.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out 104 grams per kilometre of CO2. The 1.2 litre TCE petrol engine deserves special mention too, capable in 115 brake horsepower manual form of 119 grams per kilometre emission showing and a fuel return of 53.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Go for the automatic 130 brake horsepower version and you're talking 50.4 miles to the gallon and 130 grams per kilometre. Either way, a 1.2 litre Megane would give its owner a realistic operating range of around 700 miles between tank fills. That's about 25% better than the baseline petrol 1.6 16 valve unit, which delivers just 40.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 159 grams per kilometre of CO2. 
all of which means that most Megane variants qualify for Renault's Eco2 branding, designating models that emit less than 120 grams per kilometre of CO2 and are 95% end of life recoverable by weight, with at least 5% of plastics sourced from recycling. Perhaps more importantly, insurance groupings are affordable. Expect groups 14 to 15 for the petrol units, groups 17 to 18 for the 1.5 litre diesel and group 20 for this 1.6 litre diesel. Maintenance costs shouldn't tax you too much either. Oil changes on most of the engines are needed only every year or 18,000 miles and residuals are no worse than you'd find from other mainstream rivals. Oh, and most buyers will want to benefit from the Renault 4 Plus program, which provides a comprehensive four-year or 100,000-mile warranty, free routine servicing for four years or 48,000 miles, includes four years of roadside assistance cover, and offers up to four years of lease or PCP finance subject to status. Renault had to step up its game and improve its third generation Megane. It has. You still couldn't call this a driver's car, but smarter, more frugal and better equipped, it's now a really credible alternative to the usual Astra and Focus class choices in the family hatchback segment. In the lower reaches of the range, driving comfort takes priority over driving dynamics, but that's probably as it should be. Further up the lineup, though, in a car like this one, you can really feel a touch of Renault Sport magic in the way this car attacks a twisting road. The question is, though, whether buyers in this segment who might have already dismissed this Megane out of hand will take another look at its much improved proposition. They'd do well to consider it. This may not be the European market leader it was a decade or so ago, but it remains roomy, quiet, safe and pleasantly plush, even in entry-level form. In other words, a compact family five-door that ticks an awful lot of boxes, and one an awful lot of people, I think, would rather enjoy owning. <laughs>